guys welcome back to my channel this channel is all about getting creative and trying out new things and i know you guys are always on the lookout for new inspiration and things you can paint and that's why we're going to paint something inspired by my older artworks using watercolors and the double exposure technique the double exposure technique involves combining two two images together to create one image to tell a story in a unique way and don't worry it's a lot easier than it might look I will walk you through all the things you will need and have to do or you can do to recreate a painting that looks similar to this one. Now for this painting, you will need watercolor paper. For this painting, I used the Leonardo 280 pounds cold pressed watercolor paper made out of cotton by the brand called Hanimul. Wow, that was a lengthy way to describe paper. Now the reason why I chose this paper in particular is because it's heavy so it can hold a lot of water and it's also made out of 100% cotton and I personally feel like whenever I use paper that is made out of 100% cotton I get the most even results. And I chose cold press watercolor paper because I just like the texture it gives to the painting but you can also use hot press paper if you rather prefer something very smooth to paint on. Alright so the first thing you want to do is you want to tape down the paper using artist tape or in this case I'm using just washi tape to create a white frame around the painting later. I would recommend you keep the paper inside the notepad if it's glued all around the edges because it's done on purpose as this will avoid buckling. I just removed the paper for this video. The next thing you will need is a template if you don't want to draw anything freehand. I found a very beautiful picture of a girl in the butterfly. It's a roll to free picture. I will have the link in the description box below along all the things I'm using in this video. You want to print it out in the same size as your paper, but keep in mind the frame you created with a tape and then cut it out. Now you just need to trace the outlines of the silhouette using a regular or a watercolor pencil. And since once you paint over with watercolors, you won't be able to remove the pencil line. So what I would recommend, just in case, to lightly erase the lines. Just lightly. This way you'll be able to still see the outlines, but in case you will cover it with a very light layer of paint, the lines won't show through that much. For this painting, I wanted to create a very light peachy color for the background. So what I did, I mixed a warm red with a warm yellow and diluted it with a lot of water to make the value very light. I also adjusted the amount of red and yellow until I was happy with the pastel peachy looking color. Here I actually used a small egg bowl to create a large amount of paint because if you want to cover a large area with the same color, it's best to pre-mix a lot of paint so you don't run out of it in the middle of the painting and you won't have to mix new paint that might not be even the same shade in the end. And then we can move on to painting the background. Now here I used a flat Casaneo brush by Da Vinci because I feel like it holds a lot of water and the flat brush will help to distribute the paint more evenly. Now here you want to work rather quickly and apply the paint one area at a time without going back and forth because what can happen is that you add more wet paint to an area that have already started drying so this can cause the cauliflower effect and create uneven patches. Now comes the heart of the double exposure technique. Here you want to treat the inside of the silhouette as the main area you're going to paint in. So for my painting, I wanted to create something inspired by the negative painting technique I was using a while ago because I kind of feel the spring and the summer vibes. So I wanted to add some greenery and fruits to the painting. But of course, you can paint anything you like. So I sketched out some big leaves, a flower and three oranges to make the inside of the painting look like it's part of the girl. Like she would have the flowers in her hair, the oranges could be her earring, her cheek or her shoulder. So I just tried to make the two different images in this double exposure layout work even more together. If you're afraid to mess up, I would recommend to sketch it out on top of an extra piece of paper so you can really plan it out and then you can transfer it to the actual drawing or the actual paper you want to paint on. Then lightly erase the pencil lines if necessary and then you can move on to mixing the main color. 
Now for this painting, we're going to use a warm green color from light to dark while creating depth and all the details from light to dark using the negative painting technique. So here I used a warm yellow and a cool blue. This way the green will be bright but also slightly muted, making it a little bit warmer and more realistic looking. But of course you can also experiment with different yellows and blues and see what green version you like best for your painting. And since we're going to paint in layers and start with the lightest color first, make sure you mix enough paint. Once you're happy with the mixed color, you can go ahead and apply it to the inside of the silhouette. Also, if you accidentally paint it over an area that is supposed to stay white, as in this case, the round shapes for the oranges, don't forget you can simply just use some tissue paper and lift it up while the paint is still wet. And from here, we are going to build up the painting one layer at a time while mixing a darker and darker shade of green. Now, with negative painting technique, you basically paint not the object itself, but rather the outside area around it. But here, we are going to do kind of both. Where I haven't sketched out anything, I just simply outlined some leaves and then filled in the outside area with a darker green. And for the leaves I have sketched out, I used the darker green and applied it on top of it while leaving out a thin line around the edges and the inner vein as these parts tend to be lighter. You can also play around with the paint a little bit and create a green effect from dark to light. Here you want to add the dark green to the area underneath the leaf that is covering it and blend it out with a little bit of water. Make sure that you don't use too much water, a damp brush is enough to blend out the paint. Now at some point you might think that your painting looks horrible, it's going nowhere, let's just start over. Don't listen to that voice. It's totally normal. And I believe that this is one of the biggest obstacles you might come across while you paint. What you want to do instead is you want to remind yourself that a finished painting goes through a lot of weird looking stages. And your painting is probably not finished at all. This painting, for example, still looks rather pale and flat and not really anything that I had in mind, but it's part of the process. Just keep working on the painting and be patient. If you put a little bit more time into your painting as usual, push yourself through, refine the painting as you go, you can make it better and better and push it even further. In this case, I added darker greens one layer at a time, I added shadows and more details and refined everything one step at a time because once you lay down the base structure of your painting, it will become more and more obvious to you what you can add or change. For example, I felt like the green was way too bright, so I tried to fix that by muting the bright green color. And I felt like the edges of the leaves were way too bright, so I added another layer of light green on top to just make it look less bright. I added more shadows here and there and just kept working on it. And at some point I was thinking, hmm, it doesn't look that bad after all. Now you might finish the painting and think that you're still not happy with it, but that's totally okay too because you got to practice painting while figuring out the first version of your artwork. Now, once I was happy with the greenery stuff for now, I went ahead and painted the oranges. Here I used the very first orange mixture that I created for the background and used it for the first layer. And to build up the intensity, I mixed a new orange color and applied it on top while keeping the upper area of the orange lighter as here the light reflects. Try to do these steps in one go without letting the paint dry, so this way you can create a very nice smooth transition between the colors because they will just naturally blend together really evenly. Now to create the shadows, I simply used the pre-mixed green and blue colors and added it to the orange mixture to slightly mute it. And also since it's surrounded by so much greenery, some of the green color will bounce off and cast a green shadow on top of the orange. So when the paint is dry, you can add a little bit of dark green color to an area that is slightly covered by a leaf and therefore has shadows, and then lightly blend it out into the orange color. Now from here, you can make the painting look as realistic as you like. Since I also outlined a flower that is still white, I used a very light value of blue colored paint to add a few shadows by simply applying the paint to the center, and then I blend it out to the edges of the petals. And now let's remove the tape. By the way, if you're worried that the tape will rip off the paper and ruin your artwork, what you can do is you can use a hair dryer and melt the sticky part underneath. 
This way you should definitely be able to remove the tape without tearing the paper below. Now if you want, you can also use colored pencils or watercolor pencils to add even more shadows and details to your painting. Here for example, I used black and green colored watercolor pencils to outline a few areas to make the lines a little bit more even and darker. I added a few single hairlines to make the hair of the silhouette look more natural. I used a brown pencil to add small dots to the oranges. And I also used a white pencil to create a few additional highlights here and there. Remember that this tutorial only supposed to give you an idea. Don't forget to give yourself room to play around with the paint, to add your personal ideas and ways how you paint that might make the whole painting look even better. If you need more watercolor painting techniques or if you want to learn how to improve your artwork, you can check out the videos right here. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on this little icon with my face on it. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!